what's up guys welcome to the channel we are going to make a heat treatment oven but because there is a lot of youtube videos uh, with great DIY construction and to be honest i've been inspired by one made by av make uh, i will paste the link to his channel uh, in my description i've decided not to make a typical tutorial i don't see any reason for making another how-to video but during all the preparation, planning and designing, I've been struggling with a lot of problems and, let's say, missing knowledge. And trust me, no feeling is worse than not meeting your expectation and being left dissatisfied after hours of work. So. That is why I'm going to try to give you some details and hints um, that I believe are missing in other videos. So, let's start! So, the first thing you must decide is what kind of bricks to choose. Most people use insulation bricks, but there are also ovens made of fire bricks, typical for the forges or pizza ovens. And there is no mistake in that. Fire bricks accumulate the heat and the oven will heat up very slowly, but also it won't lose the temperature easily. At the end, your blanks will be heating up more thanks to the bricks than to an electric heater. And even if you open the door, the temperature inside the oven won't drop sharply. And this could be priceless if you harden more than one blade at a time. The insulation bricks work differently. The hot air inside the oven is the main heat collector. These type of bricks have no ability to accumulate the heat. So if you open the oven's door, the heat will disperse very easily but on the other hand, the oven will reach 800 degrees Celsius in minutes, not hours. I could probably end at this point, but if I'm designing tools especially inspired by somebody's design, I like to check why somebody's made something the way they did. So, I've made some calculations to check how much heat will flow away from the oven if I make the insulation only from insulation bricks. And it was almost 230 watts. And because I was planning to make a 2.2 kilowatt oven, it was a little too much. That is also explain why most people make their ovens with 15 centimeters insulation walls. Anyway, uh, I decided to add more insulation and I bought other insulation bricks made from cellular concrete because the thermal conductivity of these bricks is two times lower than the high temperature insulation bricks. Uh, it is around 0 0.14. You could ask why I didn't buy mineral wool um, of which thermal conductivity is much lower 0.037 and the answer is simple the price i couldn't get mineral wool by piece only by packages which would cost quite a lot so instead i just spent five dollars and bought eight insulation bricks and this extra five bucks saved me 80 watts of power and you could probably say that this is not huge numbers, but if you check the percentages, there is 30% of totally losses saved. So, this is a huge number. And, by the way, um, the more power you save, the quicker your oven will heat up and easier reach 1000 degrees Celsius.
Okay, so now the heating element. And of course, it is going to be a spiral made by Cantal wire. Not having would explain how to calculate the spiral heater parameters, or why it is spiral, not something else, and why the spiral is twisted at its ends, even if the wire itself is very thick. I will try to explain all that, because this spiral is the most important element in the oven. The most obvious thing, the shape, um, why spiral? It is easy to make and easy to attach to the walls. Second thing, the twisted wire at the end of the heater. The twisting increases the diameter of the input and output part of the heater, therefore making ends heat up less than the rest. Still, even with that, it is good to use a ceramic connector between the heater and an electric wire. And now the calculation and a few facts. Diameter and length of the wire affects the wire surface area and the final max temperature your heater can get to. The resistance rises with the wire's length and decreases with diameter. Um, so, the longer wire will have less power than the short one, but on the other hand, the longer wire will have a bigger surface area, so it can hold higher temperature. I found an online calculator from the heating element, so I will paste the link into the description. The next thing is the electric installation. We have PID controller with the thermocouple, SSR relay, the heater and the limit switch. Don't even try to make oven without it. Inside the heater flows a very high current. In my case it is almost 10 amps and it won't kick you, it will definitely kill you. The most important thing for your safety is to make a kill switch on the heater which breaks the electric circuit if the door is opened. Really, it's not a joke. Second thing, and this is also important, there is a really big difference between this and this. In every electric installation, house, workshop, garage, there is a high voltage wire and the neutral wire with zero electric potential or let's say ground potential. Basically when you plug something to the outlet the differences in voltage between the voltage wire and the neutral wire makes the current flow and all of the on-on switches should break the electric circuit on the hot wire side. If you make it on the wrong side, the high electric potential will be on the heater and if you accidentally touch it, the current will flow through you into the ground. And I don't have to remind you that it will kill you, don't I? So the electric installation should look like this. And the on-off switch and the limit switch should be exactly here. Um, I will not discuss the electric installation details because I don't see any reason for that. But what I can add is that the solid state relay heats up so the radiator is necessary. And if you are a PC fan uh, and have a lot of old parts, the radiator with a fan from the old processor will be just fine.
The last thing is the thermocouple. And to save extra 20 bucks, I've done an experiment. You should know that the difference between K-type thermocouple and uh, there is six of them is just on the wire insulation. The thermocouple K01, which allows to measure to 200 degrees Celsius, and K06, which allows uh, measure to 1400 degrees is the same material, the same wires, but completely different insulation on those wires. So if you upgrade the insulation, you can easily change KO1 to KO6 with almost zero cost. Um, I've bought a ceramic pipe for one dollar, and because I haven't used up all of the high temperature silicone, I've filled this pipe and put the thermocouple inside. Believe me or not, it works fine. Okay, so the heat treatment oven is done and um, there are some things I should tweak a bit, uh, mostly painting, uh, but I'm really curious how it works, so let's test it. Okay, after 20 minutes we are at 830 degrees Celsius. So guys, I'm super happy how the heat treatment oven works, it works great and I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time. Have a good day, bye bye.